All right, welcome back to the Dart language tour. We are going to spend some time on Booleans. Booleans are pretty simple in Dart. Um, we're not going to actually spend that much time. I don't, I don't know that there's a lot to go over. We might do some comparison with uh, other languages. Uh, but again, these are annotated docs, so while you're reading, I'm here to guide you through it. All right, so let's get started. To represent Boolean values, which is something that's either true or false, typically, uh, Dart has a type named bool. Um, if you look down at the example, it doesn't actually use that. Um, so I'll use it and, and show you a little bit. Only two objects have the type bool, the Boolean literals true and false. Okay which are both compile time constants. All right, so let's break this down a little bit. There's only true and false. There is no concept in Dart of something being truthy or falsy. In other languages like Ruby, you can have truthy and falsy values, like null can be false. Um, or an empty string, if you're in uh, the Ruby on Rails framework, uh, an empty string is considered false, or like um, uh, the number zero is considered false as well. Like if you look in a database, uh, sometimes you might have an account that's active. It'll have a field that says active, and you won't see literally true or false characters inside that field. You'll see a one or a zero, meaning it's true, a one, if they're active, um, or um, zero or false if if the account is inactive okay um, so that's <clears throat> that's something to be aware of in the context of like booleanness uh, in the world of programming uh, they're both compile time constants um, so if you're declaring something as true or false um, um, or sorry yeah, true and false to compile time constants is the thing that's on the right side of the equal sign. I'll show you that in a second. So Dart's type safety means that you can't use code like if a non-Boolean value. Uh, what is non-Boolean? A string, a number, a list, a set, a class, an instance of a class. Um, so you can't check for like presence, okay? Um, so you can't do if or assert with the non-Boolean value. Instead, you have to explicitly check for values like this. Okay, so before we look at these, let's look at something very basic. So if we want a bool, let's say is active. Okay, so we'll just stay with that. Um, um, stay with that logic we started with. So we'll say that that's false. Um, so let's say somebody opens your app, they're creating a Flutter, you're creating a Flutter app, you have a user, they're not currently active until they, let's say, authenticate and agree to the terms and conditions. So to begin with, is active is false. Okay. Um, and this is how you would you would do that. You print is active. Oops. Oops. There we go. New keyboard. Alright, so that should print false. That's this is a pretty trivial thing. Um, bull here is a little bit better than saying var, but this var will resolve to being bool. Uh, remember, you can't use uh, the types with var. It will, won't allow that. Variables can't be declared using both var and type name. Okay. Uh, let's see if you can do it with const. Okay, it looks like you can. That's good. This is cool. It. Um, has built-in documentation in Dartpad. I haven't seen that before, or at least I haven't bothered to stop and, and smell the roses, as they say. Okay. Must have to extend. Okay, interesting. So you also can't extend or implement bool. Um, there's, uh, as of Dart 2.7, there are extension methods where um, you can add functionality to um, a class, whether it's your own or uh, a third-party library. Uh, but you, you can't do that <laughs> for the bool class. So just a heads up on that. It's kind of it's kind of rigid. Um, it's kind of strict in what you can and can't do. 
Um, but of course, once I declare it a const, um, you can't change it. So it's not going to do me much good to try to say, uh, let's change this. Okay, so we get an error message. Can assign to the const variable is active. And if you're new to this this uh, notation where you say the type, you know, or like the identifier, it's a const and not a var or a final. Uh, here's the type, here's my variable name, and this is the thing. I wonder if we can do this. Can't do that. Can't be used as an identifier because it's a key word. Okay. The reason I, I tried to do this is because over here it says, um, do, 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 where is it? They're both compile time constants. Although you can't explicitly say on the right side, const false, um, the thing on the right is a compile time constant. Um, on the left, we're making this variable also a compile time constant, okay? Uh, whereas something like final, at compile time, it's not going to be this constant false. This will be assigned whenever the program is run. Uh, and whether it's const or final, you still can't reassign it. Um, the name, the identifier final is a, is a pretty good indicator of that. Um, if you get rid of this, uh, you can reassign because now it's just a variable. Okay, so bool or var, it's a, it's a variable. Um, but the, the thing on the right, like this is a compile time constant, like this, this false thing can't change. You can have a, a bucket that holds that value um, and that, that can change. But I compile time the thing on the right. These these are compile time constants. Um, I went into a little depth on the last video on strings. There was a, a good Stack Overflow article of why, um, for example, a string can have interpolated values and be a string constant. Um, but you couldn't do uh, other things like a list, for example. Okay, so that's um, just a quick intro to var um, denoting the type uh, and using final and const. Uh, let's get into some of these examples, okay? So again, I think these one by one, but uh, what you should know is the assert method, uh, you can't really use that in Dartpad, or at least I've never been able to. So you have to do this sort of um, if thing to do some logic and then you can print something. So if full name is empty, then we'll print empty, okay? Uh, otherwise, there we go, print not empty. Okay, so look at this. Full name, now I, I pasted this in here, uh, but what you should know is that full name is an empty string, and if we, Okay, so if I was like typing this out, notice as soon as I put a dot, I get the IntelliSense, some help here. So I can, I can run, um, because it knows it's a string, um, it's giving me these string methods. So I can check if it's empty. This is a good thing to notice as well, is that like Booleans, um, when you're creating a method that determines if something's a Boolean, you typically wanna say is or has. Um, uh, because you see how all these others return strings or dynamic or they return an integer um, uh, starts with looks like that returns a bool so things that sound more like maybe a question um, in in Ruby we have what's called a predicate method um, okay and, and, and that's basically asking a question um, this, this kind of does the same thing, all right? So let's say if full name is empty, it's gonna print empty because it is. Um, Dart does not have predicate methods like that. This, this is valid um, Ruby code uh, to say full name dot empty. Um, it's, it's a very good way to, to read it. I really like that. Um, in Rails, you'll see a lot like if full name dot present. Um, so those are predicate methods, whereas um, in Dart, you, 
if there was a similar concept where you're looking at the presence of something, you would probably say dot is present or dot has uh, children or dot uh, was changed. These, these are types of predicate methods. Um, but again, you can't use that question mark here because the, the question mark more in the Dart language um, has to do with like the, the null safety optional uh, type notation. Okay, so we're going to check if, if something's empty. Um, and I think they had another helpful method in here called is not empty. Um, if you didn't want to use in the built in uh, string method, how could you do this? Well, you just do a literal um, double equal sign and check. Is it equal to an empty string? Okay, it's going to be empty there. Okay, it's good. Put in some values for full name. Now we're going to check, is it that empty string? It's probably not, and it's going to say it's not empty. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Okay, <clears throat> let's go down to um, checking something for zero. Okay, so let's replace all this code and format it. So hit points are zero, it's initialized like that. Let's say if hit points are zero, then Notice we didn't have that ending semicolon right there. Okay, then we'll print if they're less than z or equal to zero. Then say less than or equal to zero. Um, else, just print something else. Okay, there we go. Okay, hit points are less than or equal to zero. Uh, so it prints this first one. Okay, there's, um, so again, what this is doing is this is evaluating to a Boolean. Um, I should note that you could just put a literal Boolean in here, that compile time constant. Right now you're just getting a little warning over here that says, hey, hit points isn't actually ever used, so you can get rid of that code. Um, that's the first thing it tells you on line three. Uh, the next thing it tells you is on line seven that you have dead code. Try removing the code or fixing the code before uh, before it so that it can be reached. It's basically unreachable. This will never be called. Um, that's a nice thing that they're telling us. Okay. You change that to the other thing. Okay. Now this one is going to always be called, but this is your dead code now. Um, I want to show you something null. <laughs> so check this out. So you can literally only have uh, boolean expressions or boolean um, indicators like the value itself. Something that resolves to a boolean. You can't just say hey if, if null is the case um, then do this and it says conditions must have a static type of bool. Try changing the condition. Okay so what you could say is hit points, um, are they null? Then we'll say, what? Hit points are null. Nil. Okay, thank you. Okay, so it's going to something else. Uh, the reason is because this evaluates to false, but we also get this line underneath it says the operand can't be null, so the condition is always false. So the analyzer looked ahead and was like, hey, you've got this integer here. Um, you've initialized your variable. You've assigned it a value. Uh, there's no way this can ever be null, so it's kind of like dead code, okay? Uh, you may want to look at that. So that's, that's a pretty cool thing to look at. Uh, I don't think this has like a built-in uh, method to say if it's less than or equal to zero, but you it looks like there are some um, some methods. So when I type dot on the variable, I get this IntelliSense uh, menu that popped up. I think I'm saying that right. IntelliSense, this is what this is, right? Or like context menu or something. Uh, anyways, it's just a, a helpful thing in the program. So you don't have to go to the documentation and look up the methods every time. Uh, so that you have a type, you have a hash code, you have a sign, you have a bit length. Ah, and here's our predicate methods. Is it even? Is it odd? Is it finite? Infinite? Not a number or negative? So you could say if it's not a number, okay, but zero is a number, so we're going to print something else. 
Um, there was another example down here at the bottom where we do check for not a number. So let's just take that logic dividing by zero. Okay, paste that, zero divided by zero. Okay, it says hit points are null, but it's really hit points are not a number now. That's what the case is. Okay, again, it's not zero by zero, it's like literally any value divided by zero is not a number, right? Really, so that number divided by zero, or is it zero divided by any number? God, I've already forgotten my math. That's something else. Okay, what is um, 10 divided by zero? It's undefined. What about zero divided by zero? It's also undefined. Okay. That is very interesting. Zero in the denominator. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's something to look at. Um, be aware if you have a large, well, let's just let's start with zero by zero. Okay, so that's gonna say that is definitely not a number. Okay, because it, it resolved to print that. What if we say one divided by zero? That's something else. What is that? Why don't we just print it and find out? So instead of printing something else, let's just print, um, oops, not his points. His hit points dot is in a n. What does that resolve to? It says it's not defined for the type double. So one divided by zero is returning a double. Hmm. Okay. Let's see if somebody has typed this into Stack Overflow before. Is in a n um, defined for the class double? I literally need the the thing about n a n guys. Just saying it isn't used. So it's going to try to evaluate to a Boolean expression. So this would be returning false, um, which is why it tried to come down here. But then, let me get rid of this. There we go. you think it would also resolve here and just say false. I could do that, will that do anything? Nope. Let's do one more search for this. Dark division by zero. Not crash dart. Okay, so they're saying n divided by zero. Oops. It's not integer division. Okay, look at that. Dart automatically performs double division, and the double type has the double infinity constant. This means that print n divided by zero will yield infinity. Okay. Double dot infinity is actually defined as 1.0 divided by 0.0. .0 integer division by zero exception. If you use integer division instead, you will receive that. Oh, 
and check that out. Okay. Where's that thing? Okay, right there. So this is this is actually integer division here. Um, so let's just again, we'll just say something else. Unsupported operation. Result of truncating division is infinity. That's interesting. Okay. Well, hopefully you'll never actually have to use this. Um, but I kind of want to say if you do, let's say like n is 42 there, and you take this, okay, let me um, comment this out, just this part. Okay, let me plug in like 42 there. Does it give me the same error? Yeah. Uncaught error, unsupported operation, result of truncating division is infinity. Okay. Yeah, so what I'd like to do is make a comment on here to say maybe when you answer this two years ago, this was the case, uh, but now if you do it, you just get this, this sort of like infinity thing, okay, because there's no indication that it's integer division by zero exception. Okay, interesting. That's really good to know. Was there a thing? Let me check something else. I think, okay, going back to this double division, okay, so that's something to remember. Double division, was there another method here? Is infinite. Okay, so now we're thinking this is infinite and it should come here into this top one. Uh huh. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Okay. <laughs> Negative one divided by zero. Okay. Uh, I just want to do one more thing. Where is that? Here. Okay. And that gets a result of truncating division. Okay. So that kind of gets the same thing. All right, so this is good to know. Here you have, if it's if it's infinite, say very interesting indeed. Um, yeah, so any number divided by zero that's not zero, only this one will give you not a number, is what it sounds like. Okay, cool. I'll put this in the video notes. Okay, it's good to know. Okay, let's get back onto this. Uh, to check for null. That's the last thing here. Okay, let's format that. All right, so var unicorn. Um, yeah, this is going to be a good one. Um, so we want to print if the unicorn is null, then we'll say uni unicorn, unicorn is null. Okay, oops. Else print not null, something like that. Okay. So, all right, we declared a variable, we didn't give it any values. So, this tells us that var unicorn semicolon is shorthand for var unicorn equals null. Okay, so if you want to be super verbose and explicit, you can just write this out just like that. Uh, is there a null return type? Hmm. Let's, let's find out. Dark null identifier. Null safety. Um, Yep, 
Yeah, I don't know if you can explicitly say I want this val or this variable to be null. Okay. Now we're getting into a little I think my intuition is telling me that hello, okay, that null is a a, a, a compile time constant. Okay. Yeah, so var unicorn with, um, if you just declare a variable, it's the same thing as saying it's equal to null. What if I say final? Okay. It says it must be defined before it's used. Okay, so I compile time, um, final, this unicorn, it, it hasn't been associated with anything yet. Um, it's waiting to, to, to do that at runtime. Okay, so the only way is to literally assign it null at this point. Okay, so at the time it runs, it goes boom, you two guys, you're linked together. Now I can pour, perform this check. Okay, um, if I want to say const, I'm more inclined to say that this would actually be, well, what does this say? The constant unicorn must be initialized. That's because, like, what would its constant value be? You can't have constant um, variable declaration without assignment. Okay, so that makes sense. What if I was just like, hey, it's gonna be late. No, that's not a thing. Like final? No? Okay. Yeah, I'm just playing around with some stuff. Okay, cool. So now we're back to the original. Um, let's see. Oops, unicorn dot. Yeah, so there's there's no like is null method uh, for declared variables. You have to just literally say equals equals null. Um, the most I've seen this in the wild is if you have Firebase and you have like a Firebase user, um, you'll do something like if um, Firebase user oops, is not null, that means they're authenticated. And you can go do authenticated things. Um, otherwise, you know, bad login, try again kind of thing. Like, um, so this would normally be like um, some function like sign in, oops, something like that. Okay, and it's not a var, it'd be like a, a future or something. So you get back this Firebase user that's um, asynchronous, so you're awaiting that or something. Okay, um, and then you check. If they're not null, they're authenticated, and you can go do stuff. So that's typically how I see that in the wild. All right, the last thing on Booleans, I said this would be short, but it's not, is the idea of a bang. So let's say, um, let's just start with something very simple. Let's just print true. All right, that's pretty um, pretty trivial. It printed true. Compile time constant, super easy. If you print bang true, that's false. If you double bang it, it goes back to true. You can bang in as much as you want. Um, I don't know how many there are. Apparently that's true. Add another one, it becomes false. Okay, um, why would you do that? Um, typically it's just used as like a one-time thing. If let's say um, true is, look, <laughs> not false. Okay, so is true equal to false? That's false. If you bang it, it's true. Fuck. <laughs> oh yeah, true not equal to false. That's true. Right, you bang that and it's false. <laughs> okay, nice. Way to go, Aaron. All right. The thing I want to show you is um, in Rails, we have a, um, I'll show you this, um, this, this double bang idea. And that's because 
Ruby and Rails has a um, the idea of truthiness and false falsiness, truthy and falsy values. So if I have a um, let's say a deceased at timestamp or a flat iron email, um, which is a you know a string populated with characters, if there's something there in that variable, in Ruby I can just um, I can say like oops. Say if flatiron user do this, like do something now. Um, authenticated, right? So the the user is present; they're authenticated. Um, I don't have to say not equal null, um, but sometimes if if maybe it looks like a predicate method or something, or the the programmer doesn't know, hey, did, what is this return? Is this a um, is this a string? Is this a, a, a boolean? Then you can just double bang it. So the first bang, if it was a value, like let's say our um, flat iron user is uh, Tom. Okay, if you bang that variable, Tom is originally truthy. Okay. Uh, if you bang that and then it becomes falsy, you bang it again, actually it doesn't just become false, it becomes false and it becomes true. So you go from a truthy value to false to true. So a lot of times you'll see double bangs um, and that's to return the, the literal Boolean value. Uh, that can be helpful because let's say you wanted to store this in a database when he's logged in okay now you can say um, like instead of print you could say um, record in database let's give it a column active and you could say something like like flat iron user okay so what this would do is you would have some method named record in database um, let's say you have the active field for that uh, table and then this is actually going to send the boolean true instead of sending this truthy value which is uh, the string tom so that's that's why you would do that um, again that's kind of like ruby you can't do that in dart okay so you have to check for um, the null presence Okay, that's just one more thing you got to do. Okay, um, yeah, so falsy values in rails, zero, empty strings, undefined, null, false. Um, but in Dart, everything has to be evaluated to true or false uh, when you're doing these types of comparisons. Cool, okay. Um, that's it for booleans. There's not even a link at the bottom, like like uh, like strings. <laughs> strings was like, hey, there's more information here in the library tour. Booleans were pretty simple. Um, so again, you can't extend the boolean class. You cannot extend the boolean class. You can't use falsy, truthy values. You need to um, use the built-in methods or do a comparison. Um, and not a number and infinite behaves in a funny way. Okay, and that's what you need to know about booleans. Thanks a lot.